In this video, we will continue with the part 3 of how to make a histogram in Chart.js. And in this part specifically, we're going to focus on the tooltip. All right. So here, what we need to do is we need to do the tooltip. And the reason why is currently you can see here what we have. I don't want this value here, here above, you can see 0 0.5. This would not make any sense. And the reason why it doesn't make any sense is we don't want 0 0.5 hour. What we really want to know is, for example, between the first hour or, or 12 o'clock at night up to 1 in the morning, we want to see a certain amount, basically from 0 to 1 or from 12 to 1, what, et cetera, et cetera. And here we would continue on from 3 to 4, and here's from 4 to 5, 5 to 6, basically, because here we have these pinpoints and not what we have here. Why it gets 5.5 right now is simply because we set up this here. However, we are required to do this. And the reason why we are required to do this, we want to put the bar at the very center. If you would move this, let's say I'm going to put this on 1, you would say, well, case close or problem solved. If we do this, what happens is it, it might readjust. It readjusts the entire bar chart on itself, creates uh, all space between here, and this creates all errors and incorrect calculations because Chart.js needs to recalculate the bar and then it sees some inconsistencies and then it starts to create all space and everything is basically incorrect at that moment. So if we have to reset that and go back here, all right, so this is why this data point here is the most tricky one, especially if you have different data points, you have to find the middle point where it is. So this is why we also use here the step size of three to force these things and eventually you can pay, make a full hour. Now, all right, so what we're going to do now is the most complicated part is in the options. All right, we have to get this one here and then in here, I'm going to put in the new part. So we say here comma, and then what we're going to do is here, we're going to put in the plugins. And here, the plugins, this is in chart.js3 that we need to use plugins if you want to pinpoint a tooltip. So we say tooltip, and this is tooltip without the S, remember that. Then we say callbacks. So what's a callback? A callback is basically it will start to do something and add, after it's done in a function, it will show the value. That's the callback. So we want to first do something before it shows the end result because right now it just shows immediately 2.5. So what we're going to do is basically in the tooltip, it shows the 2.5, but then we say, wait a minute, do not show the 2.5 first. We have a command you first do, which is a callback. And after that, it you should show whatever I want you to show. That's what we're going to do now. All right. So the first thing what we want to do is we want to say here, we want to have the title. This here in the tooltip is the title, which is the highlighted or the not highlighted, but the, the bold top. As you can see here, 11.5 is the title because it's bolded. Well, below here, that's the body text basically. I'm not able to move my mouse because if I move my mouse, the tooltip starts to shift. However, uh, the hashtag of votes and then the number amount that is the body part but the upper part is what we call the tooltip title all right so the first thing what we will say is here in the title we say items referring to that specific value and then we say here we're going to give this a quick function basically the following we say here an if function or if the item or no item no items with an s dot length so if there's no if the item doesn't uh, contain any length do not show so we can say here return and then we say here quotations and there you are just keep it blank all right so that's the first one so if this is the case so what are the items here the items is basically the value here it runs through this this value here we'll search it if there's no value do not show at all all right so that would mean if there would be blank. Basically, if we would do this, let's say we at this one here, we don't have any value. So we're going to comment this out, save that, refresh. It doesn't show, but we also want to avoid any possible issue of showing anything else here. All right. However, we're not done yet because this is just the default if on this one here. We, because you can see here now, we don't even see anything at all. All right. The next, what we want to do is the following. We're going to say here, constant, and this is a comma. Then we say here, constant, and this constant is the following. 
uh, oh, well, you don't have to put a constant here because it, it's not a new value. But in this constant, we say the following. We say item, and the item is basically items, which is an array value, zero. Why zero? Every item has only one title. Remember, this is referred to in title. There's only one title in every item here. So there's only one, and later on we'll be able to see that, but there's only one title. There's no two uh, titles, so that's why in every one, it will loop through all of these values, only seeing this single value, which is considered the title. All right? So this is why zero. There's no one. The next one here is basically, I would say like this, it would be data, zero and then you say dot title oh sorry no not zero there will be data uh, zero oh yeah yeah that's correct no data set zero so it will be like this data set zero but then this data one and then basically title zero again because of the the new title in data one data two data three etc etc et all right very important so make sure you don't get confused on this all right so once we have this title which is, which consists of a length or a value. Then we say here the following const. We say const x equals item, which is this one here, which is basically array zero, item zero, or title zero, parsed. So what is parsed? Well, parsed is basically a command built in, in chart.js. However, parsed here is to make sure that we are able to read this. And then we say this one, dot x, parse x what is x well, well we're going to parse this value here make it readable because this here can be a string and we don't want to have a string we want to make sure that this is a number because we're going to calculate something what we're going to calculate is basically the following we're going to say the following we give new constant with min value and what is this min value well the min value will be x minus this is the x that's this one here. Now what we're going to do is, well, we want to have a starting point of 5. So we do minus 0 0.5, then we get 5 o'clock. And that's what we're going to do here. So we say x minus 0 0.5. This is why we parse it, because now it's become a number or an integer. So basically, this is an int. In short, this would be an int. Int parse. That's basically what we're doing here. Basically, this is an int or uh, parse int. Uh, this is the command here parse int but built in in chart js all right so we got that one and then what more is we don't want only the uh first value of five o'clock or three o'clock or whatever we want the between so if this would be minus three then max should be four so how do we do the other one how do we calculate max here almost similar except we do instead of minus we do plus all right so once we've got all of that now we can start to echo out this or return this value here. So then we say return. And now pay attention here. I'm going to use here template literals, meaning I need to use backticks. All right. Pay attention. This is backtick. It is not a single quotation. There are differences. Pay attention with that one. All right. So in this here, we're going to use the template literals. And a template literals really means is whatever you type in here, it will show whatever it is here. So we say here. Let's say type hello. If I just save this here, you will see here now refresh. It will start to say whatever it shows. Okay. So with this, it means that we cannot use just this value like this because it shows it as a text or a string. Now, if we do min, we, instead of we want to get the constant min, which is this value here, when we do this here, min, we do refresh, you can see we only get min. All right. That's not what we want. So this is why we're going to use, we have the template literals and then we say here the interpolated expression yes this is some tough words and what this really means is basically the original text that we write in here will be converted into something else what exactly will this be converted in well you guess it this will be converted into whatever the x value is minus 0 0.5 so this will be a variable it will understand now that this object literal has a variable in here and then we can say here, and we do exactly the same with this, but then with the max. So once we do this, 
we can say here even hours and then you will see this if we save this now we put in here hours and then we say from hour from 10 to 11 and here hours 11 to 12 etc etc and this is basically how you work with this and now you have this wonderful item here with the tooltip working correctly so this is probably the most hardest one especially understanding here these are terms we call them template literals in combination to make the temp or basically whatever is in there readable as a variable so this is what we call well let me give these names here this is a template literal and then we have also template literals always use backticks backticks these template literals and then in the template literals we're using interpolated expressions meaning whatever we put in here doesn't mean what it's supposed to mean because this here you would say well according to backticks here it should literally get this text here you should just see this but it doesn't because what happens is it will read this and it will read this into a variable or a constant it read it. so it knows it's a constant and this constant would be the min constant and that's what we're really doing here i would probably make a specific video for these two topics because these are advanced topics or concepts you should understand in JavaScript. However, once we have all of this here, we save this now. Basically, we're done here. There we are. This is beautiful. We can even remove this here. We can say here the number of votes. Well, let's adjust that. Number of votes should be number of visitors. And then what I want to do here is just two more items. Hide this, because this is ugly, this is, or not really ugly, but not appropriate in our case because we have different colors so we say here legend uh, where are we in the plugins and then we say here legend curly the braces and in between here we say display false comma here at the end so we indicate that's not our variable or not a command below refresh there we are all right so that looks slightly better and now we have everything proper with the number of visitors the colors etc etc working here and we can do even some rounded borders let's do that as well that would make it just more fun so we say here border radius and this border radius let's give this a five pixels save that here refresh and now we have some beautiful rounded borders as well and this is how you create a histogram understanding everything from top to bottom as what we did so if you have any questions regarding to this i won't blame you this is a quite advanced topic but you can put them in the comment section below thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in chart.js check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.